We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Jesus continued, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, my name is Mitch Phillips, and I have the privilege of serving as the assistant to the Bishop for Leadership here in the Northeastern Ohio Synod. So let's talk about the good old days, whenever those were. Remember schools in the good old days? Educational development was all about the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Obviously, spelling was not so important for them. Well, I have some R's for us today, four of them, in fact, and these are four R's about faith development. These describe living as a child of God, with some help from the parable of the sower that was just read. These four R's are roots, ritual, relationships, and response. So let's start with roots. You have to be connected to something in order to sustain growth. You get connected through your roots. That was the problem with the seed that fell on the rocky ground. It had no depth of soil, no place to get rooted. Well, in the church, our rootedness is in the gospel. This gospel, which is the good news of a loving and gracious God who sent Jesus to live among us, to put a face on God's love, and then through the cross, deliver us from bondage to sin and death. This gospel, the good news of a loving and gracious God who's done this for us, who's created a relationship with us, simply because God loves us. We do not deserve this. We cannot earn this. It is simply 
a gift. And all that God asks is that we live in response. But that's the fourth R, which we'll get to in a little bit. We encounter this gospel, this good news, through the Word of God. And that Word of God comes to us in different ways. First of all, there's the life of Jesus, for He is the Word of God enfleshed. Then there is Holy Scripture, which is the written Word of God. There's proclamation, what I'm sharing with you now, which is spoken Word. And then we encounter the Word through other people, how they live their lives. That is the lived Word among us. In order to be connected to this Word of God, to the Gospel, we need to study, to learn, to immerse ourselves in the Word. We do that through private individual study, through small groups that spend time looking at the Bible. We do it in Bible study classes of all sorts. And so, roots is the first R for today. The next R is ritual. This is what helps us get connected to our roots and to God. And that was the problem for the seed that fell on the path. It didn't get connected. The path was too hard. There was nothing for it to get connected to. Now, we have lots of rituals in life. Some of them we repeat so absent-mindedly that they become habits for us, like our morning and evening routines as we begin and end the day, or even how we say hello and goodbye to people. Those are just a couple of examples. Well, in the church, we have an abundance of ritual, and frankly, it's the cause of a lot of arguments, isn't it? I mean, different rituals and different ways of practicing those rituals have meaning for different people. So worship, for example, some people prefer it to be somber and quiet. Other people enjoy worship that is a celebration and, and raucous. When it comes to prayer, some people prefer to, to kneel, others to sit, others to stand. When it comes to baptism, some people who sprinkle the water, others pour the water, and there are others who advocate for full immersion baptism. Holy Communion. Some churches we come up to a communion rail where either we may stand or we may kneel. Other congregations, it's, it's a continuous distribution. Now, we can't say that any of these options are really right or wrong, but we do know that sometimes ritual can cease to have meaning or purpose for us. And then we need to find new rituals that do have meaning. It reminds me of the story of a couple of newlyweds. And so the husband, as he's watching his wife bake the first holiday meal, they're having a ham. And he watches as she takes the ham out of the refrigerator and she cuts off the end of it, puts it in the pan and puts it in the oven. And he notices over the years, she always cuts off the end of the ham and puts it in the pan, puts it in the oven. And he asks her why it is that she does that. And she said, well, this is, this is the way my mom taught me. This is the way you cook a ham. Well, at the next family gathering, it occurs to him to ask his mother-in-law, you know, why is it you cut off the end of the ham before you put it in the oven? And she said, well, when we were first married, the ham was this big and the pan was only this big, so you had to cut off the end of it to make it fit. Well, it's a ritual that no longer has any meaning. You know, the pans are bigger now, and the, the wife was just doing it out of just rote practice. Sometimes ritual in the church becomes like that as well. We no longer know why we did it. It no longer have, has meaning for us. But for us in the church, the core rituals we call sacraments. And as I mentioned before, there's lots of variety in practice. It's not how we do them that is so much important. What's most important is that we do these rituals, that we do engage in the ritual and therefore maintain our connectedness with God and with God's Word. So for us Lutherans, these sacraments are baptism and Holy Communion. They're all about connection, getting and staying connected to God and to the family of God. 
Well, let's move on to the third R, relationships. These relationships, they can nurture us and they can tear us down. That's what happened to the seed that fell among the thorns. They got into some bad relationships with weeds. It got choked out. Well, we as Christians can be choked out as well. We need to cultivate good, strong relationships with the right people. Now, I really don't need to give you examples of how the people we hang out with will begin to rub off on us. We pick up their, their mannerisms, their phrases, their attitudes, and their actions. That's why for us as Christians, participating in worship together is so important. It's wonderful to have technology these days that we're able to participate and worship anywhere around the globe, but worshiping together as a community of faith is still central to our identity as Christians because it's by being together with other people to build those relationships that enables us to be the people of God. And so that's why participating in worship is so important, while fellowshipping with other people of faith is important, why study groups or small groups or participating in ministry teams is so important, that we develop those relationships that give us good connections with one another. The final R then is response. Remember I said earlier that this is what God asks of us? Response is what happens when everything else I've been talking about comes together. That's the seed that fell on the good soil. It responded in a big way. This seed had depth of soil for roots. It got connected to what was necessary, the ritual. It found itself in good relationships and it responded in an astounding way. For a farmer in Jesus' day, a good yield was tenfold. But he tells us in this parable that here it was 30 or 60 or even a hundredfold, 10 times what was normal. This is what happens when we get rooted and connected. My siblings in Christ, a response is expected of us as well. When we are rooted in the gospel, in the word, when we engage in the rituals that keep us connected, when we cultivate good relationships, then we too will respond in great ways. What kind of response am I talking about? Simply loving and serving both God and neighbor. This means making God the center of our lives and helping others to catch a glimpse of the love and grace of God as we seek to address the hurts and hopes in their lives. The abundant yield will then be more people getting rooted in the gospel and experiencing the ritual that gets us connected and enjoying the relationships that help one along through life, which will then lead to still more response. The four R's. Roots, ritual, relationships, response are what lead to the good old days in our individual faith journey and in the lives of our congregations. I invite you to consider the quality of each of these in your own life, your roots, rituals, relationships, and response, that you might be connected, deeply rooted, and bearing abundant fruit for the kingdom of God. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of grace and faith, your faithfulness is never-ending, and your righteousness becomes ours through Christ Jesus. Send the church to proclaim the gospel message both near and far, in church buildings and on street corners, in person and through digital means. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of sky and sea, the plants, animals, and mountains and plains proclaim your glory. Proper the work of those who help in the environment, Bring relief to areas recovering from natural disasters. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace and justice, you call us to live as your beloved community throughout the world. And still in local, regional, national, and global political and civic leaders, a desire to work for your well-being of all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care and compassion, you bring assurance when we are afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of therapists, nurses, and other health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and soothe any who are sick. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrows. We pray for children and teachers preparing for a new school year. Make your presence known in our work and play, in lively conversation, and in quiet rest. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you send people to renew both church and society. We give you thanks for their faithful service. Help us follow the examples of their call into your gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.